Hello viewers, welcome to the Information Literacy class. In this module, we are going to look at how to access and retrieve information from online sources. We began this course with face-to-face -face interactions in which we looked at various aspects of online information and how we interact with computer systems to be able to retrieve, use and share such information. I'm your electronic resources librarian. You can always contact me through my email, fhybo at uhouse.edu.gh or via WhatsApp through the contact provided. Also, I encourage you strongly to visit the library website where we have populated a lot of resources through the OPAC, that is the Online Public Access Catalog, and also particularly through the e-resources channels. All right, so let's continue with standard two of information literacy skills, or the pillar two, which is about access to information. Now, we will explore some online search tools available to us in our search of academic databases. And the first tool to look at are subject directories. Subject directories are simply indexes compiled by human subject experts in a particular field. So, for example, those with expertise in the field of medicine and the health sciences will index particular web pages that they think are credible for either students or practitioners or professionals of any sort, policymakers, to visit on the issues of health and biomedicine. An index simply is a list of words or phrases which you may call headings and their associated pointers or locators to where useful material relating to that topic or heading can be found. And this definition can be found in the given Wikipedia link. Examples of uh, indexes are usually the back of the book index that we see in most of our textbooks. And also electronically, if you want to have a fair idea of what indexing looks like. There is a very light app called Everything Search. You can just look for this app through your Google search engine and perhaps download and install it. And you will see it will, within seconds, index or list your entire um, computer system, every major title, including your software and files that you have stored and everything. And I'll be using that same app in the course of our uh, discussion for you to understand how it helps to quickly find items or materials or files that are located on your computer. Now Demos is a good example of the subject directory that I would like to share with you. As you can see here on this page, various subjects are organized in a hierarchical order. You see for example health and under health is a broad topic, you find fitness, medicine, alternative medicine, and the rest. Now, if you click on medicine, for instance, you are likely to see general medicine, internal medicine, and the list continues. So, usually a subject directory is all about a logical organization of categories on a particular subject that is usually layered the most general on top and then click down through the narrow areas until you get to a specific subject that you want. Now, what I should caution you about though is the fact that the tools that we are exploring may not necessarily exist as unique or separate entities when you are working in an online environment. For example, as you can see, though this is an example of a subject directory we are looking at, right on this same page, you can see a search bar that is prompting us to the fact that a keyword search can be conducted here. So what you are seeing here is a search engine for this particular demo site. So yes, it is possible to integrate more than one of these tools in the same online environment. All right, that said, let's continue exploring our tools. Now, subject directories can actually come in various forms. We have selective directories. And these selected directories are the ones that are quite restrictive in subject area. They are not as broad as the ones that try to combine arts and medicine, family, and all of that. For example, you have librarians index to the internet, which are general subjects, but you know, informing librarians 
in uh, their narrow area of expertise. You have academic info, also compiling sites of academic interest on a wide range of subjects, but as it sounds, it is academic. And so you don't expect to explore entertainment and other subjects in that particular area. Then you have the Scout Report Archives, which is also an academic source of um, information. But these are directories, as I said, they are browsable. So you see, one very important distinction to make is the fact that directories are browsed. Browsing here means you are going to be clicking through certain ranks or categories of subjects and be reading as you go along. Now, quite opposite to the subject directories are search engines. Search engines, unlike the subject directories, are not compiled by human beings. These are actually software programs, and usually we call them web bots or kind of robots, you may say, in the soft form. They are programs that actually are run by sites to enable the indexing of web pages automatically. Um, for example, you have Google search engine, you have the Bing, Yandex, Ask, and all these the examples are many. You also have a broad division of these uh, search engines into two. You have the individual search engines, which are the most common ones that we use, and you have meta search engines. The meta search engines are actually search engines about search engines. <laughs> okay, now what it means is that a meta search engine like Metacrawler or Docpile will allow you to submit a single query and draw results from several other individual search engines. Unlike the individual search engines, the meta search engines do not compile their own databases of index terms. So the individual search engines like Yahoo, Google, Bing, Ask, what they do is they scout the internet or the World Wide Web from time to time and index any new document or web page that is available. Whereas the meta search engines like Docpile do not do so. Rather, when a user submits a query or a search term to these meta search engines, they in turn submit that to the several individual search engines and draw results from whatever these individual search engines actually provide in response to the query. Some of the health-oriented search engines are displayed here. You can see your Omni Medical Search, uh, Go PubMed, um, WebMD, NextBio. The examples are many. These are just a few. Now, one very interesting group of academic search tools online are databases. Databases are actually electronic filing systems. I believe you have heard several similar terminologies such as customer base, client base, whatever base, whatever base, membership base, or whatever. Now, when you hear that kind of terminology or expression, it simply means the full collection or pool of a certain category of items. So database here only simply means collection of documents. But these documents are electronic files which are well structured in a manner that will aid retrieval. Usually in a database you will see in the design view everything looks like a table but unlike tables we don't refer to the vertical spaces that contain unique information such as author names only, or titles of materials only, or publisher only, as columns. We actually refer to them as fields. So you have author field, title field, publication details field, and whatever. Now, in tables, we usually refer to a collection of these fields that gives us a description of an item horizontally as rows. But in database terminology, we say records. So a record in database is actually a collection of fields and the entire combination of fields and records actually form the files or what they call tables. So a file in the database is a combination of fields and records and this field gives you a single information as I say unique information. For example, if there's an author field, 
it means only author names can appear in that particular field or that vertical space and a title field can contain only titles of documents but the record will now combine the author's name the title of the document the year of publication the publisher place of publication that gives you a full description of the document and perhaps also a field for attachment of the full text that is how databases are organized like now there are bibliographic databases such as PubMed, PubMed that looks at the public interface for the Medline database. And these databases are bibliographic because they do not contain the full text of the documents that you're looking for, only the bibliographic or publication details, or you might want to call them the metadata. So they describe, they are databases that describe materials that are held in a particular subject field, but do not give access to the full text. In most of these bibliographic databases, the best you can hope for is a summary or abstract of the material that you are looking for. I have given some examples of these bibliographic databases. You can try and explore them. PsycInfo, Eric Arts Index. Uh, you can look at online public access catalogs of libraries. For example, the UHAS OPAC. These are bibliographic. They give you a full description of what is held in a library's print collections, but not the electronic full text of these print materials. Full text databases, on the other hand, such as the Cobra Medical Collection, Health Star that I'm giving here, they are the ones that give you access to the full text. For example, uh, the NCBI or National Institute of Health through the National uh, Library of Medicine actually provides us access to an archive of open access copies of various research articles in biomedical sciences and these are actually stored in what is called the PubMed Central or PMC. Now PubMed, as I already mentioned, does not provide full text but it has a good feature of linking you to the sources of full text and the most primary source for PubMed is the PubMed Central where the NIH itself archives full text of research that have been sponsored and made open access. There are also numerical and hybrid databases and um, the list continues. Now how about online libraries? Yes, through the University of Ghana off campus access and um, all you have students actually have access to a vast number of databases that include Wiley Online Library, ProQuest eBook Central, and JP Digital. These are all online libraries where you can actually borrow electronic books and other materials. And as you use them, the days count down for you to retain them, just like in the normal print or physical library. Now, I believe most of you are already registered with the UHAS library. If you haven't, then you can contact the library to create your individual account. But I can also send you via email if you request a manual on how to actually create your individual library account on our library system to be able to access these vast resources. Digital archives. I already mentioned archives and I gave the example of PubMed Central or PMC. Yes, there are many online archives, some of which are governmental by the US National Institute of Health, which is the PMC that I gave. There are also intergovernmental archives such as the um, IRIS, that is the Institutional Repository for Information Sharing by the World Health Organization, WHO. I have also given you uh, one example, but which is unfortunately currently is continuing, is Popline. Popline used to be a project sponsored by the United States Agency for International Development, USAID, and Padme, uh, sorry, Popline um, was mainly dedicated to reproductive health knowledge and family planning issues. But the fortunate news is that news is that actually Popline, though this continued as a project, it succeeded by a new project called Knowledge Success. So I think I've made a blog about this on the library uh, website. And so you can visit that 
to learn about this. I've also included the new project, Knowledge Success, in our list of free online databases. And so you can still continue to access information resources on reproductive health and family planning issues there. Now, another example of archives, uh, what we call institutional repositories. For example, we have UG Space, we have KNUSC Space, UCC Space, UDS Space, all these space, space, space. These are all customized versions of DSpace, a repository software. And um, I'm happy to inform you that UHAS is also in the process of rolling out an archive that will perhaps be called UHAS Space. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, there are also, apart from these databases and archives and search engines, free journals in medicine and health. In fact, we are lucky to be in the discipline of the biomedical and health sciences because um, this perhaps is the discipline with the highest online presence. There's so much information online in the health and medical sciences that are made free of cost. Free here doesn't mean that they are of low quality, no, but because many institutions actually sponsor research in health, and so the outcomes are really made free, of course, as public good. And uh, you can actually get from certain sites like the free medical journals, which I have provided here, or you simply go to the director of open access journals, Duage, and there are tons and tons of free medical journals and any other subject that you can find over there. Miami Central, for example, is a pioneering uh, publisher uh, in online peer-reviewed journals that are actually mostly open access. Another very important tool for online academic search are what we describe as gateways. Now, gateways are not databases of information resources per se but what they do is to negotiate access rights they negotiate access rights in the sense that ideally they only serve as a bridge between the user and a particular network for example most of us are familiar with the research for life programs there are actually five programs currently, Henari, which is for health, Agora for agri, Oari for environment, Adi for uh, research and innovation, and Goli for legal information. Now, these have been made possible by the United Nations through a public-private partnership agreement that was uh, negotiated between uh, the United Nations and several of the top tier commercial publishers in the developed world, uh, publishers such as Elsevier, Wiley, are all participating in this particular program in which they have agreed to make a certain amount of their uh, publications, which are scientific information that are actually not for free to the developed world, free of course to the underdeveloped or developing economies and actually it is based on World Bank data on the levels of development these countries that they are granted a certain level of access. Sometimes certain economies are granted a subsidized access where they still pay some amount but very small fee and there are other categories that do not pay anything at all. I think that is category A where Ghana belongs and so UHAS is actually participating in the Research for Life program by subscribing to Hinari. But the fortunate thing is since 2018 January, we have been given access to the rest four other programs. Even though we subscribe only to Hinari, once you log in with your UHAS credentials, you actually have access to Agora, Oari, Adi, and Goli as well. Now, these are gateways. What it means is the journals and other databases that you are able to browse through Hinari or through the Research for Life programs free of cost. If you choose to log in directly to these journals without going through the Research for Life gateway, you would be required to pay for these materials. But 
just because you go through the Hinari or Agora or any of these Research for Life gateways, the system will allow you to browse, download, read, and use their materials for free. That is the difference between gateways and databases or other general sources that you read online. All right, several other gateways exist, such as Redline Plus, Netscape, all these give you access to publications online. And you can see several other subject areas. Global Health Library, for example, is a WHO initiative. Addiction Search is about drug addiction and treatment issues, alcohol rehabilitation, substance abuse. All right, how about online public access catalogs? Opax. I mentioned them briefly when I was describing the bibliographic databases. Yes, these are catalogs of libraries and they actually describe the library's holdings in terms of print resources. So they are usually all bibliographic and you can be lucky to see at least table of contents and brief summaries of some of them. Usually in an online public access catalog on our park, you will be required to know a particular access point. Access point here. Don't confuse this with electronic communication or Wi-Fi where you refer to a router as an access point. Here, access point simply means the code by which you actually enter into a retrieve, uh, an information retrieval system for information or the means by which or the metadata by which any piece of stored document may be retrieved. So, for example, every document is described by its author, by its title, by its subject area, and in the library environment, you have what we call a call mark or call number. The call mark is a combination of the class number and some elements that allow you to actually know the shelf address or the specific location of a book on the shelves in the physical or print library. If you know any of these, then you can actually locate the particular material that you are looking for or brief bibliographic description about it in your OPAC. Now, very important reasons for using the OPAC. Usually, we use the OPAC uh, as it is accessible online anywhere to find out if a particular material of interest to us is available in a particular library among their print resources. That helps us to know whether we should actually walk into that library or not. But also, it is possible that we have already used the particular material and then forgot to write its full bibliographic details. And while you are away compiling your research or assignments, you realize you need to cite this particular material, but you forgot to take certain vital bibliographic or publication details. So you could quickly go online into the OPAC and key in for that particular resource and all the bibliographic details appear for you to use in citing the material. So that's another interesting reason why you use the OPAC, not necessarily because you want to move and can and pick a physical book. Now, beyond those two uses, the OPAC is also very uh, important in terms of knowing the extent of coverage of a particular subject area in a library. So remember that UHAS catalog is actually in union with the University of Ghana catalog because we use the University of Ghana library management system or library services platform which is called Sierra and so usually you will actually be navigated onto the UG CAT when you go through the University of Health and Life Sciences library OPAC. Right. Now we have done all our exploration of online search tools. We need to now take a look at what information retrieval systems are available at the UHAS library and how you can use them to get access to information only. Right. The UHAS OPAC, for example, covers all the subject areas 
that are handled at the University of Health and Life Sciences. And then this can be located from your access through our University Library website. And this is what the UG card looks like. And as you can see from this place, if you really want to find out what we have at the University of Health and Life Sciences Library, you need first to go to where it says view entire collection. That's the default that you will see in this space. And select UHAS Main Library, which is one of the many libraries that are on Sierra of University of Ghana Bank Library. And once you select UHAS Main Library, and it is now where you are looking, you can actually click to drop down and select a particular access point. Here it says keyword. Keyword here means you could use any search term in any area to locate information that is available in our library. But you could select author or title if you know the specific author or specific title of a particular material or book that you are looking for in the library. And then after that you click search and that will locate the material for you. This is an example search using keyword for the keyword cancer in the University of Health and Life Sciences Library. And as you can see, there is an author here, Khaled Ira. The title of the material is Principles of Biomedical Informatics. But you can see the word cancer is highlighted here in the contents. And so because you use just a keyword, though cancer does not appear in the title of the book, because it is within the contents, it is picked up as a material related to cancer in our UHAS print collections. And this was where I referred to the shelf address, the call number, as you can see. So if you're interested in the principles of biomedical informatics as a book in the library that you want to read, you simply call this number to your reference librarian or just write it down and when you move into the library just look for the shelf that is marked W. This is a class number of this particular shelf and you can see W26.5KAL written on the spine of a particular book. That is the book you are looking for. You look on the title and it's the same as this title. The important thing that you should take note of here is in the bibliographic description of this material it includes contents at least that helps you to know what the scope of this particular material is before you decide on whether you want to have it in terms of borrowing or reading on the uh, desk or on the carols in the library so at least here you have biomedical data you have symbolic biomedical knowledge probabilistic biomedical knowledge biomedical information access computing with genes well i'm interested in this and so once i get what i'm interested in here i know this book must be useful or relevant and so i quickly put a reservation on it i walk to the library and pick it up and read for further information so this is all that you actually get from a bibliographic database like an opac and you can see from here we actually had 14 results which were sorted by relevance and this was just one of them that was picked just for an example now apart from the UHAS OPAC we also have subscribed e-resources and I already mentioned to you that we have a kind of collaboration with the University of Ghana when it comes to our e-resources and our library catalog and so through the UHAS library you can actually create your individual account on the University of Ghana library system which allows you to not only use the OPAC but also browse the vast e-resources through off-campus authentication. So you refer to the library for guidance on how to create your account, generate your username and password and get access via off-campus authentication. And some of the databases that you will actually see are CINAHL, that is Cumulative Index to the Nursing and Allied Health Literature, Cochrane Medical Library, EBSCO Hosts, 
health source, Hinari. Hinari is here, but you don't really need this because it has its own Hinari subscription. Popline, as I said, it used to be there, but now it's no longer. This is an old screenshot that I made. A Science Direct, very interesting. This is by Elsevier. You can see Sage Research Methods Online. Very many of them. These are just few examples I picked. Many Hinari. This is the you have subscription on Hinari. And I believe um, during our face to face class, uh, I did give the you have credentials, but I will be prudent sharing this online because they are actually um, cautions regarding how we use the research for life programs because don't forget these are costly ventures for the commercial entities that have agreed to participate in the UN's negotiation to help the developing world to gain free or subsidized access to their content and so the things that we have here are really not free for those in America even South Africa or for those in Europe and therefore it will be prudent sharing these in um, online platforms that anybody can access or that can easily be transferred by people from this community to others but if you visit the library or you request through email personally there's an university email system i'll send you your login credentials of course we have the free online databases and WHO is one of the very first to look at this used to be the structure i'm sure with the recent updates things have changed but you will notice that under health topics and under publications which is under resources you see the IRI institutional repository for information sharing and you browse to the uh, various items through all that type so you could actually restrict search by language or publication all of that now I think I have provided the new URL for the WHO uh, iris already in the earlier slides. PubMed is also free. You just have to put in pubmed.gov or the longer URL ncbi.nlm.ni.gov slash pubmed. It will bring you to the same thing. And if you type pubmed.com, it will not get back to this. Now, PubMed also recently updated their website and so this actually used to be the legacy pubmed which you will see it is still available but when you type in pubmed it will actually log you onto the new platform and that is also made available through our e-resources you will see it under discovery databases on the UHAS library website now there are free ebook sites that you might be interested in you can see um, the free books for doctors is a free books for doctors um, url free book center ebooks for whatever very many many of them that are quite interesting so those are some of the online information retrieval systems that we have made available to you through the uhas website